वी हैव शिवानश विद अस सो काफी टाइम ये रहता है कि हम लोग को ये पता रहता है गूगल कैसे जाना है एंड डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स कंपनीज में कैसे जाना है बट टॉकिंग ऑफ एच एफ टीज जो बोल रहे थे ना कि लाइक सेवन लैख पर मंथ वाली कंपनी तो इससे भी कंपनीज बोली जाती है एच एफ टीज तो आज अपने को मिला है शिवान शिवान अपने साथ पूरा शेयर करने जा रहे हैं कि उनका जर्नी कैसा रहा टू गेटिंग इन टू एन एच एफ टी फॉर्म एज एन इंटर्न तो वो पूरा अपना प्रोसेस शेयर करेंगे एंड वी विल बी नोइंग यू नो एच एफ टीज होती क्या एंड जो नॉर्मली मैं आपको अगर एक छोटा सा हिंट दे दूँ दैट इज इन आई आई टीज वी कैन हैव प्रोडक्ट बेस्ड कंपनीज इन नॉर्मली एन आई टीज प्रोडक्ट बेस्ड एंड बी एफ एस आई कंपनीज हायर करती है एंड टॉकिंग ऑफ टाइची कॉलेज इन इंडिया इट इज कॉन्सल्टेंसी एंड एनालिटिक्स वाली कंपनी जो होती है सो एच एफ टी में हायर होना इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट and it is uh, not a lot of people know and we don't have a lot of people sharing about that so thanks a lot shivans for joining in today so before we start do you mind introducing yourself a bit sure so hi everyone uh, this is shivan chukla i am a third year undergraduate in the department of csc at iit kharagpur and i love doing omtt programming and apart from that i love watching movies cricket and web series so i would be interning at graviton research capital which is a high frequency trading firm uh and uh, my role is tech look okay, uh, that is great you know like i came to know about shivan because he wrote a article and he posted that on linkedin so i just read through the article and i, I thought that you guys also should know that you know hft is hoti hai exactly and like jo cheeze rehti hai na to before we like jump into your total interview process and aap kya kya questions aapko face kiye the and what was your preparation strategy so do you mind sharing a bit about hft is or uh, graviton in general yeah sure so basically hft as you pointed out earlier stands for high frequency trading so hft comes are those companies that perform algorithmic trading basically and they do this at a very high frequency and with very low latency trading systems so <clears throat> even if they are making a profit of just one paise through one trade <clears throat> the ultimate profit uh, if they do this at such a high frequency let's say a million times in a second then eventually they will end up making a lot of profit and that's the reason why they are able to pay so much graviton the work culture is a bit better as I got to know from senior. How did you get into it? Like, you know, what was the jump start? Like, I can totally understand you are from CSC at IIT Kharagpur, so of course you have a huge peer network. You have a good talent of seniors, you know, who must be helping you out. But when was your start? Like, did you start coding when you joined IIT, or you started coding before that? Okay, so I started computer programming right from my first year. I got to know about it from my seniors through some sessions, and uh, I just started it out of like to find. I was exploring multiple paths, but uh, I really started liking it. And I like there were uh, we had a group of friends, so we started participating in contests and we discussed solutions after each contest. And at that time, I was not specifically doing this for preparing for a company or like internship or placement, but I was just doing it out of fun. Later on, I do some specific. Uh, internship get for getting an internship preparation also but eventually the background which i had for competitive programming that uh, helped okay, a so lot so now uh, you know like what uh, i know is like uh, graviton came on campus for you guys so when you noted like okay so now graviton is came to the campus and all the way competitive programming we were, you were solving questions i guess on a regular basis every day uh, so you know when you have seen that okay so this particular company is hiring now i need to apply and need to prepare for the coding assessment and the interview so what was your preparation strategy like if you can just point out you know like okay so when the company came i read this is this particular topics to get my you know sharpen my skills so what was that okay, so in general for hfts i think there are three major factors which are important uh, the first is of course cp as you pointed out the second thing is cs fundamentals like operating system computer networks object oriented programming and the third one is cgpa so at the time when the internship procedure start you can't control for cgp right so it is fixed so if you are a, a first or second year watching this then uh, make sure to maintain good cgp because that matters a lot in hfts and so basically <coughs> uh, when this uh, like i was in general uh, the companies came for uh, came to it kadakpur for hiring interns and the coding rounds uh, usually start around Ju- uh, july so mid of july to be precise so i started uh, uh, 
I was doing competitive programming also in past, but I started my, uh, more intense preparation from me after my fourth semester ended. So at that time, I uh, used to give contests on Code Forces and also Code Chef. Almost all the contests that happened during those times, and I also gave all the Google Kickstart Code Jam contests that happened during those times, and. Yeah, so that was my routine. And apart from that, for the, uh, at that time, uh, I was a I am a B Tech student, so I did not have the courses like operating systems and computer networks in my curriculum at that time. So I was mainly targeting object oriented programming, and I had a course uh, for that in my fourth semester. But uh, so I just uh, revised through its slides, and I also went through the Geek for Geeks uh, C plus plus OOPS uh, articles. Yeah, so I think that's all so for it. So I expect you know, like you must be having you know sort of an online assessment out in the initial before you have your interviews. So if you can just mark the question levels, you know, like uh, and what was there? In, if like, if was it only uh, say three or four questions in a limited time period of time, or did you have something else, like you know, some mandated questions or some HR based questions? Or uh, if there were just coding questions, can you just mark them, like you know? Uh, div to a and in, in this it might be you know helpful for people who are just preparing so that they know what kind of questions they might be facing. So uh, for graviton specifically, uh, there were two coding questions. Uh, like uh, first of all, we had to apply to the company, and there was a CGPA cutoff of eight. Of uh, most of the people who were uh, who had CGPA above eight and were from thirty circled. Uh, from EEEC, uh, CSE, and MNC department, they were allowed to write the test. And yeah, so in the test, uh, it was uh, we have two coding questions to be solved in uh, 75 minutes, as far as I remember. And the test platform was Hackerer. So the first question, which was, uh, it was a very uh, nice problem. I would say of hard difficulty, diff to D, you can say, or even E. So that was based on uh, that was the shortest path problem based on graph, but it was it involved a nice technique which very few people know known as uh, edge space reduction based on constructing pseudo nodes. So not many people are aware of this technique. So uh, hence not many people were able to solve the problem. And the second problem uh, that was around medium difficulty. I would say dip to C or D. And that was based on number theory involving sieve and some optimization. Okay. So most of the people who solved, uh, like all the people who solved both these questions, around 10 to 12 people were able to solve uh, amongst uh, hundreds of people who applied for the company. So all of them were shortlisted okay. for the That's interview. Great. Okay. Uh, so like you know a lot of my juniors and a lot of people they have, they have this one question that uh, we are competitive programmers. What should we write in our resume? Should it be only the ranks in the competition that we are getting, or whatever the projects? You know, because normally what I have seen, uh, company programmers don't tend to have, uh, you know, like don't solve much of open source issues, and they don't build a lot of projects. They don't take part in a lot of hackathons. So, what was present in your resume, which you think made you apart from the crowd, and did you actually focus a lot on building your resume, or it just went through as it is? Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Specifically for HFTs and also other day one day two companies that come in IITs, they don't pay much attention to resume, especially uh, to the projects or if you have any past internships. Uh, because uh, in starting two years, they don't expect a person to do those many things, but they do pay attention on uh, CP ratings and rankings. So. If you are a competitive programmer, just uh, it's fine. Just if you have uh, one or two, I would prefer to just uh, learn some basic web development and uh, make two basic projects. Like uh, if you see my resume, I had just uh, one project, which was uh, my course project. In that was a full stack web development project, basically. And another one, I just make a CF, uh, some anal analyte. Like it does some. Analysis. I also for I also forgotten about that. So it does some uh, analysis for CF. Uh, yeah. So they don't pay much attention uh, to your projects and all. Just mention whatever ratings uh, you have in coding platforms and whatever rankings. And even they pay like 
why i'm saying that they pay attention because towards the end of my interview uh, my interviewer explicitly asked me about my competitive programming experience and he went to through my resume and asked uh, okay so you have these these ranks in these these competition okay. so yeah they do pay uh, attention so now talking of the competition as you mentioned right like as of now google kickstart has stopped functioning and so according to you what are you know three competitions that comedy programmers should focus on like which you think that that does matter like I, as i can see you are wearing a hacker cup t-shirt so i'm expecting hacker cup is on the list so apart from that at some more competition that yeah, you know, sure. just juniors should focus on so any competition like two three which you can mention yeah so earlier there were three competitions by google itself code jam hacker oh, sorry code jam hash code and kickstart so now they have stopped so this is a very uh bad thing but uh, yeah so earlier there used to be a code chef snack down also but last year that was not also there so i think even people can like i myself uh, <coughs> i myself has mentioned the cf uh, competition ranking also and people do mention that if you are just participating in regular cf uh, code uh, competition then you would have around 15 to 20000 people at least 10000 people in each contest so you can mention even those rankings also and uh, yeah so like if there is some special contest in cf like we have global uh, contest and in headquarters also you can mention those it's fine apart from them if there are any specific competitions in uh, helling at uh, college level like like uh, during the spring semester many college have their fest in which uh, many events are organized so if you are participating in them you can also mention those it uh, okay. it has a good impact now uh, let's move forward to the, your interview round so how many interview rounds did you have and where it you know <clears throat> if you are having two so both of them were a uh, technical or was one of them was a managerial round in which you also had hr questions and all uh, so ultimately like you know what people should prepare it should if they are just preparing you know uh, well with cp and after that they are preparing just uh, some cs fundamentals like os networking dbms and oops and do they also need to prepare something else sort of or uh, how were interview rounds if you can just share on that sure so i think uh... the whole interview round in hfts it can be divided into three parts so the first they will ask of course about cp questions or dsa questions then they will ask uh, they will grill you on cs fundamentals so for my case i did not have any uh, course like operating system computer networks computer organization and architecture so they just asked me about the oops and c uh, language fundamentals but that should be clear like <coughs> the here oops does not mean that you are just uh, preparing the definition of inheritance what is encapsulation and all you need to deep dive into that and you should be well aware of even uh, with the details which not many people study like virtual function virtual function table and all and uh, like if you are using stl like most of the people use right so you should be aware of how internally vector is implemented how like push back works and you should be they can ask you to code even the implementation of vector or any other stl container so you should be well versed with that and apart from that like even the basic things like pointer you should be familiar like what is the difference between let's say int star const p and constant star p so this this was the question which they asked me with like the starting question for language fundamentals so you should be well versed with detail and if you, it would be good if you prepare more advanced topics of c++ also like smart pointers dynamic cast reinterpret cast and all of these things so yeah and if you in like <coughs> for me os and networks were not there but for the, i think for other colleges let's say for iit delhi they have a course uh, computer organization and architecture before the internship period starts or for many dual degree people who have their internship in fourth year so these all courses are already completed so they then they won't ask much from language fundamental then they will grill more on these things so for that yeah you have to like if you are a student who will have these courses in upcoming semesters then study them properly you can go through the books like for us there is a galvin book for networks there is forozen 
and for computer organization and architecture there is a book by hennessy peterson uh, all of these are nice books and study them well because they will ask lot of because of eventually you will be needing those in your work at the company so they will ask you regarding okay. that yeah, so sure. my interview <laughs> yeah so basically uh, my interview started uh, so in iit kadakpur uh, in day one uh, interview usually starts at 8 am around but for hfts or other like mostly hfts they started uh, their interviews at around 6 am so my interview started at around 6 am and then in starting i was asked a question uh, which was based on some string manipulation and something and it involved uh, the use of try basically it was a try question so most of the people they don't even uh, study these advanced dsa topics like try so it is if you are targeting hft then it is a must to be well versed to each of these and even i heard in other uh, campuses uh, someone was asked a question on fast fourier transform or these advanced topics like that so you should be well versed with advanced topics then i was asked another question in which uh, there was some restaurant management system or something like that and uh, there were three types of queries which i need to handle and i have to propose uh, what would how well i going to like what data structures i would be using and how will i handle those queries of the and how will i optimize them and state the time complexities and all so after that i was asked about language fundamentals and oops and finally i was uh, again they asked some that was the easy medium question they asked about some matrix multiplication and all involving uh, fast exponentiation and finally they asked basic hr questions so uh, for me it was just a single round uh, towards the end of my first round they gave me the offer because like in hfts they can't risk you like especially for companies like quadi like they start uh, high, like they have to hire like companies like quadi they hire lot of people so they start their interview early and then if they like you they want go let you go because other companies going to hire you so they will give you offer like for my case they towards the end of my interview they asked me do you have any other interview scheduled from uh, that what was the time so i said yes i have one from nk security which was another hft firm so okay so i said okay wait <laughs> i we are calling our hr <laughs> so yeah that happens but like for hr they don't like other uh, product based company they don't ask you that hr based question just okay. kind of a formality okay so now let's talk on your know, any three interview tips which you want to give to your juniors you know who just preparing and say suppose they are good at uh, cp they are able to solve the problem but a lot of people i have seen they get stuck in interviews because they don't know how to make them understand they get super nervous and they are not able to solve at that point of time so three tips which you want you know juniors to keep in their mind when they are going for the interview so the first of all i would say think out loud which many people also recommend so whatever you are thinking don't i would advise not to be silent for more than 30 second if you're not getting any idea like what you would be thinking something at least something in your mind just keep sharing that it need not be approach to the problem it could be anything but just keep uh, your like voice volume could be low but just keep telling whatever you are thinking so if you are going in a wrong direction then interviewer can help you with that so like for my case what happened uh, the first question they asked me <coughs> i gave the solution using try initially but then they asked me to use uh, uh, hashing in that and like uh, yeah they asked me to use hashing and then solve the problem so i was initially not getting like how the hashing can optimize this so i was just saying all the things which was coming in my mind and then suddenly i said something like uh, okay so if we do this this then it may not help so they just uh, hear this and they say okay okay just tell me what you were saying at this moment so i just told so yeah think out loud the second thing i would recommend is try to give more and more mock interviews as possible uh, you can ask your friends you can ask your seniors 
because uh, you interview preparation is something you need to do if you are good in cp as you mentioned that it is possible that you might fucked up in interviews for the third point uh, don't just leave preparing for hr question because sometimes they are a crucial factor okay i have heard the story of people that they have successfully cleared all the other rounds but in hr round they just fucked up and due to this they didn't get the offer in that you have to like there are standard questions available on google just google them and prepare them you need not be honest while answering those questions okay. Yeah, so perfect. abhi like kafi you no know, interesting things discuss karte hai jaise in a world full of tutorials and a lot of resources so kafi log they ka, just get stuck with this only ki you know abhi hum tutorial dekh rahe hain uske baad ye wala playlist dekhenge uske baad ye wala karte hain so what are three best resources for preparing for hft you can just mention any books any open source repository which like you know might some you have some questions from there or uh, some platforms or anything if you want just three best resources that everyone should read while they preparing for hfts uh okay so like for complete the first thing is of course competitive programming so for competitive programming there's a website which many people know i think cplgodams.com so that contains uh, the very nice explanation of all the standard algorithms out there and at the end it also contain the practice problems kind of so you can practice the similar problems <coughs> so another is cscs problem set uh, it has very nice standard problem most of the pro- problems which are built are built on top of that so that if there is a problem so first of all you think of it uh, of its ad hoc part and then eventually it broke down to some standard cscs problem so i would suggest that go uh, solve as many as cscs problems that is going to help a lot and apart from that uh, like for cp there are uh, there is code forces code chef at code which everyone knows so they tra- they have lot of code problems but also for dsa you can go through interview bit because they are pro- like sometimes uh, they can ask in hft they generally don't ask from binary trees and all but you need to i think i believe you need to prepare for everything so there are topics like linked list stack queue binary trees which uh, cp people don't even touch so i would recommend just even if you're not solving the interview bit completely just solve those buckets corresponding to these topics which or any topic which you feel that you haven't much practice on while doing competitive programming and then yeah for uh, of the for uh, next uh, resources for let's say uh, cs fundamentals okay so for that uh, for oops gfg has a very nice set of articles go through them they are very nice apart from that for c++ core there is standard cpp reference.com and c++.com which you can have a look for all of the functions which you are exploring another is of course chat gpt you can just tell chat gpt it will give lot of details and references which you can have a look at and if you are interested in exploring more C, like c++ in more detail then there is a youtube channel cpp con which contain the recordings of cpp conference which are held every year they are very nice videos you can just watch them if you are free but that much detail is not usually required and <clears throat> apart from that for c++ basic understanding and object oriented programming there is a book by scott meyers effective c++ which you can read then coming to like for os networks and uh, computer organization ar- architecture i have already mentioned the books yeah so i think that should be sufficient thanks for that uh, okay i will try to mention you know uh, the links in the description so check that out uh, now like going for the code part like suppose you are solving right and you get stuck with a question so how do you approach on that do you directly go and check the solution and you read and understand that and then you try to code on your own or do you watch the like suppose if you're solving a problem in code forces if you can find the tags right so do you read on that particular tag and then you try to solve so what is your approach and suppose like a particular person is you know solving and they're not able to improve their rating so this is also one of the most common problem that people have uh, so how they should improve in that so. okay so for that yeah 
I just follow the order you mentioned. So first of all, I try hard by my own. If I'm not able to solve the problem, I just open the tab of that problem and then start thinking for five ten minutes. If I'm still not able to solve the problem, I would go to the editorial and open the hint. So usually the authors they put like hint one, hint two, and then the full solution. So just see one hint and. most of the time hint one is just useless you would have already thought of that so yeah just open a hint and then think again if you can able to if you are able to solve now and only when you have tried enough open the editorial understand it well if you are not able to understand discuss with friends and then uh, once some like code and submit the problem also otherwise if you just read the editorial and skip the problem that's not going to help because many of the problems are implementation heavy these days in code forces so code it up while increasing and, the rating so how yeah. can you know people solve that issues like ki, you know bhaiya main quantas diye ja raha hu but increase nahi ho raha bar bar gire ja raha sort of ya fir cost kya raha so what on that <laughs> yeah so for that like personally if you see my rating graph uh, like i have two accounts the one mentioned on my linkedin that i created during the may itself so that is just like this but if you see my original account which i had from my first year so it is like uh, at uh, just see at once it is shivan shukla 60 uh, mention please mention in the link so if you see at any if you see just in a month it's never increasing it's just going up and down going up and down going up and down but eventually if you see over a period of let's say 3 to 4 months then it is increasing so it's not going to help like that that you are practicing problem it's fine but it's not like you will eventually have your uh, like increase in your rating what happen is like if you come to let's say specifically code forces so there is a like things i believe happen in phases let's say there is a phase first you are able to problems uh, you are able to solve problems till c but you are not getting any idea to d then there you prepare for like you practice to let's say a to oj ladders of uh, d problems and you solve previous contest problems of d then there will come a phase when you are able to think of something but you are not able to get the real like final solution then there will come the phase when you are able to think of the solution you are not able to code it completely during the contest and the, the time will end then there will come a phase you are able to submit sometimes d you are not able to code it like you are not able to understand sometimes and then eventually there will come a phase when you are able to solve d whole like every time so it happens in phase by phase so don't pay attention like if you are targeting increase in rating i would say don't pay attention to current rating just focus on solving more and more problems as fast as you can so eventually you will be able to like if you are able to solve more problems in a faster manner then eventually there will be increase in ratings another advice i would give like what i used to follow during uh, summer right before my internship i maintained an excel uh, i maintained an excel sheet uh, let's say i was uh, i was that time solving a to oj diff to d ladder so what i was doing i was writing uh, how much time i took in let's say when you are approaching a problem there are phase, like there are phase in that also first you will read the problem statement then you will and uh, like start thinking of that then you will code it up then you will submit you will find it giving wrong answer then you will debug it and then finally you will submit so i used to maintain a separate column for each that what is the time i took for reading what is the time i spent in thinking what is the time i spent in coding and finally for debugging if that i got wa so and then i at the end of the i was or at the end of a week i used to analyze that how much time i am uh, spending while solving a problem at which part and accordingly i take decisions like how, what to improve and what to do first and if you solve problems for like lot of time then and lot of problems then eventually everything will improve so don't get worried for that just think of solving more problems and in a faster way 
since you are from IIT, let's hit a bit of IIT flavor in that. Okay. So, like, what was your rank? Because if you are doing CSC from IIT Kharagpur, it should be really, really good. So, what was that? Uh, so, my J advanced rank was two seventy eight. Okay. So now talking of the total, you know, journey. So how did you know IIT helped, or you know, do you feel that you know, काफी बच्चों को ये होता है कि जब वो prepare कर रहे होते हैं IIT के लिए. Uh, I did not get into an IIT. I got in IIT Raulkela. I was getting some IITs, but काफी low branches थी, तो I did not go there. Uh, but मेरे को नहीं मिल पाया ultimately. I was not able to get a good branch in IIT. बट ये रहता है ना कि काफी बच्चे भी देखते होंगे पॉडकास्ट तो उनको ये थॉट रहता है कि इज इट वर्थ द एफर्ट जो हम इलेवन ट्वेल्थ में पुट इन करते हैं गेट इन इन टू आई आई टी वॉट डू थिंक एंड हाउ डिड आई आई टी हेल्प इन शेपिंग यू इन द कमिंग इयर्स If we talk about specifically HFT firms, then they usually don't go to below. Like they don't even go to all IITs. Like if I talk about Graviton, currently there are 19 interns, including me, and they are just from top six IITs. So if I would not have got into IIT, then HFT was extremely hard for me. I believe. Like they do hire some. Like full-time employees of campus, but for that uh, you need to be exceptionally well, and obviously that would be hard. Uh, like I'm not saying that on campus is also easy. Like there are a lot of people. Like for Graviton, if I talk, they hire only two people from my campus, and in IIT you can expect like lot of people are smart enough, lot have good ratings, and there is very high competition. But still, it would be. More hard if I have not got into the IIT, and then coming to the atmosphere of IIT, like most of the people are doing CP, most of the people, like if you talk about anything, there you will find people doing that or something or something. You will always find something. So you can have a discussion on them, you can discuss solutions, you can discuss problems, and you will not feel alone. But like for tier three people, what usually happen is of like. Only a few people are doing that thing, so they eventually lose the motivation to continue whatever they are doing. So that is one thing. Another thing is like the learning which you get. Like it's not only the professors which teach. Also, you get to learn from lot of things from your friends. So the peer learning also helps a lot. So I think all of and also the awareness. So in IITs. Uh, like there are societies for most of the things, and they do have lot of events for freshers, starting from the first year. So starting, I believe from IITians, starting from the first year, they have an exposure to lot of things. What all things almost uh, are there. So then they can explore uh, like each one of them, and then they can decide what they have to pursue further. So <laughs> ultimately, uh, Shivansh, thanks a lot for joining in, and thanks a lot for giving your time. Like every bit of this podcast, I've learnt a lot. And since you are going for your internship, I hope you know all the best for your PPO. Like also, folks, I guess you know for a lot of you, your internship has started, and you must be thinking you know how to get that converted into a full-time offer. So I have a podcast with one of my friend Arnab, who got his PPO converted to a full-time offer in Google. So do check that out. I will be linking that in the description. And also, uh, Shiva has tried to you know cover almost everything. And whatever it, it came to my mind. So, if there is anything else which you want to share, like you know, any final tips or any final wording to the viewers who are watching this, or anything that you very want to say, you feel free to share. I think uh, you covered most of the points. So, finally, I would say that uh, it's okay. Like for internship, uh, like uh, it's not necessary. Like. it happens sometimes that we put lot of effort but still especially if you are a tier 2 or tier 3 people like you are putting lot of effort but you are not getting any opportunity so don't feel more, like don't get demotivated just continue doing your hard work and eventually you will land up in your dream job so yeah and okay so yeah, i, I will be mentioning it. all the resources that shivansh mentioned in the description and i will be also uh, mentioning the 
socials of Sivansh. So you know, I he is pretty busy. So he will try his best to reply that. And do mention, folks, in the comments that if you want to have more people from the HFT world and more people from comedy programming world, and you want to learn from them, I will be bringing them along. Uh, so ultimately, thanks a lot, Shivansh, for joining in, and bye bye.